two, Palacios, Precinct 4, and myself. We have a quorum. Uh, anything under item uh, two? No, sir. All right. On our consent agenda, any concerns? No concerns, Judge. Move for approval of consent agenda. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 4. Item 4A, requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code Section 262.024, a professional services for the provision of legal service, legal opinion, in connection with reimbursement for the reconstruction and repair of the levees in Hidalgo County. So moved. Second. I'm glad you were able to put a cap on that. Yes, sir. <laughs> Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. I'd be pursuant to the board's approval, requesting approval to accept a letter of engagement with the firm of Simpson Morris Hecker for the provision of legal services slash legal opinion in connection with reimbursement for the reconstruction and repairs of the levy in Dow County. And it's got a flat base fee of $7,500 on it. Move for approval. Check. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. C, requesting approval to purchase following through the district's membership of the by board contract number 373-11. Tiger Corporation, three John Deere 7130 tractors with 28 foot Tiger Boom mowers. The amount is $423,727.48. And the reason we're acquiring these right now, there's going to be a change on emissions starting January 1st. So, any commissioner or precinct that's looking at buying tractors, we would recommend you place the order now because there will be an increase of about $10,000 per unit come January 1st. Move for approval. You need a second? Check. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. The requesting approval to purchase the following through the district's membership was Texmas contract number 12-23V20 John Deere Company for John Deere 6115D tractors, the amount of $165,153.96. Check. I've got a comment. Yes, sir. On the previous action. Mm hmm when does the delivery schedule take place? Usually within 45 days, Commissioner. Valde, have we taken any action on uh, if we buying something that we need to get it before the... Yes, Commissioner, as always, any purchase or any, uh, any obligation made in, in X year, if the goods or services are not received in that year, then the uh, the uh, and they received the following year. Then the following year's budget would cover that good or service. Uh, I think there are. I think there is an exception at Mr. Frasso with the grants, uh, but I don't think that would pertain to the district. That's on the county side. And and uh, the reason, Commissioner, it's not the encumbrance of the money, is that they're running out of 2012 models. Uh, All right. We need to. Yes, sir. Keep that in mind. Yes, sir. Those in favor of the motion is made and seconded. Indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 5, request approval of payment request number 1 for McAllen Construction, Inc. for project number 12-011-0711, J09 Drainage Improvements Phase 1 Irrigation Siphon in the amount of $68,985. That estimate has been reviewed by the engineer and signed off on. So moved. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. B, request approval of payment, request number one for McAllen Construction, Inc. for the project number 12-013-0410, construction and replacement of Weir in conjunction with NRCS Grant, Main Floodwater Channel, Weir 2, Willesee County, Phase 2, in the amount of $155,034.73. Again, that's been reviewed and approved by the engineer. So moved. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 6, presentation of scoring grid of the firms evaluated through the district's pool of surveyors for the purpose of ranking by the Dow County Drainage Number 1 Board of Directors in connection with surveying services for the West Main Drain extension east of Ware Road, Mile 9. Commissioner uh, uh, Joseph Palacios, this is for the Mile 17 and half extension on the acquisition. The ranking is Quintanilla Headley Associates, 96, Tesla Infrastructure Group, 90, Ramiro Gutierrez Corp, 88. Job move. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. The following items are again for the same project. Presentation of scoring grid of firms evaluated through the district's pool of appraisers for the purpose of ranking by Dow County Drainage Number 1 oh, Board Mr. of Directors. Carson. I'm sorry, sir? 
they, they approve the ranking. Well, I apologize. Number one rank will be Quintanilla, Hadley, and Associates. And we need to approve that item. I apologize, sir. Pursuant to the board approval requesting authority to issue purchase order to the number rank number one rank firm of Quintanilla, Hadley, and Associates for the surveying services that relates to the West Main Drain extension east of Ware Road and Mile 9. So moved. Check. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C, presentation of scoring grid of the firms evaluated through the district's pool of appraisers for the purpose of ranking by Adal County Drain District Number 1, Board of Directors, in connection with appraisal services for West Main Drain extension east of Ware Road and Mile 9. Leonel Garza and Associates in 96, George J. Salazar appraisal, 89. Move for approval. Check. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. D, pursuant to the board's approval requesting authority to issue purchase order to the number one ranked firm of Lionel Garza and Associates for appraisal services as it relates to the West Main Drain Extension, east of Ware Road and Mile 9. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item E, presentation of scoring grid of the firm's evaluate through the district pool of title company services for the purpose of ranking by Adal County Drain Number 1 Board of Directors in connection with the title commitment services for West Main Drain Extension east of Ware Road and Mile 9. The two firms of Valley Land and Title with an 83 and Edwards Abstract and Title with an 82. Move for approval. Check. Godfrey, is there any way of uh, splitting up the, the work? I mean, 83 and 82, I mean, I really see absolutely no difference. They both issue insurance. Uh, they both governed by the state as far as they can charge. Uh, it's the same insurance policy, same amount. Judge, I'm not the sure only, what makes one. Sure, better. the only thing I request from the board is if we do have projects that are four parcels or five parcels that y'all allocate us to split the parcels that two to one and two to the other one. Sometimes we have that ability, sometimes we do not as far as the amount of parcels. I think that's, a, that's something that uh, we should be doing, uh, especially with title companies. There's absolutely I understand, no sir. difference in the cost of the and again, we'll get with legal and put an item on the agenda for authorization that when we do grade them or rank them, that we try to split the projects up and try to give everybody some work. I feel the same as a judge. I think that's a good idea. All right. And this, this time, I think we're, we're on item E, and the motion was for Valley Land and Title. Yes, sir. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item F, pursuant to the board's approval requesting authority to issue purchase orders to the number one ranked firm of Valley Land and Title for title commitment services as it relates to the West Main Drain Extension east of Ware Road and Mile 9. So moved. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Is there anything under? Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, it's just a point of clarification. On 4B, the firm of Stinson, Morris, and Hecker, is that the ones from Washington? Yes. Okay. Thanks. And, and somebody gave us these, and so if you see these lights blinking like that, that's SOS. That's something. I don't know. It's something. you got to pay attention, I guess. Thanks. Judge. Yes. With, with the county on the procurement of professional services, uh, engineering services, Normally, you, uh, you approve the ranking, and then you approve enter into negotiation with right. the number one ranked firm. That way, you know, you follow the, the procedures that are prescribed by law. In this case, you're already awarding uh, the work to the number one ranked firm. To who? To the number one ranked firm. The, the, mm -hmm. the drainage district is following a different process, is what I'm trying to no, say. They're, the, they're the not. County. They're... Yes, sir. With, with the county, you're select, you rank, approve which, the ranking. Which item are you talking about, sir? Uh, the engineering uh, and the appraisal. Well, the engineer mainly. Okay, where? What number? Uh, that's uh, six A and B. Again, uh, with the county purchasing procedures, is that you uh, you approve the ranking first, one, two, and three, and then you enter into negotiation. You approve uh, the negotiation with the number one ranked firm. Because the statute says that if you cannot reach an agreement with the number one you firm, you go to number two and number three. In this case, you're already approving the awarding a purchase order to the number one ranked firm. I'm assuming that means and, that you're going to give them the work. And I guess, Mr. Auditor, that's the process we've used in the past. It's not an engineering contract that we have up here. It's basically a survey that we're doing at this time. 
He is correct, Godfrey, though. Okay. You have to negotiate with the number one rank, and if the negotiation is successful, you issue the purchase order. And it was a lot prescribed. I don't know. So if it's the wish of the board, we can uh, go back and take no action on number six and bring it back for the board consideration under a different format. Well, it wouldn't be only number six. It would be, it would be okay. all of number six. All the items under six. Six, eight. Even the appraisals and, and even, even the, the title companies? Both. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because, okay, you're supposed to rank and then enter one, two, I mean, negotiate one, two, and three. Okay. Steve, do we need to rescind the action? It'd be best to rescind the action on, on everything under item six. All right. If yeah, that's what you're suggesting, is I'll entertain a motion to that effect. Someone. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. So we're rescinding actions on 6A, B, C, D, E, and F. That's right. Okay, sir. And instead of uh, saying requesting authority to issue purchase orders, mm -hmm. requesting authority to negotiate. to negotiate. Very good, sir. We'll get them back on the agenda for next week. We have no other item unless the board wishes to entertain one. Need a motion to adjourn? Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much, Judge Commissioners. Thank you.
and more and more time. But. Good morning. We want to welcome you this morning to the regular meeting of uh, Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court for today, October the 30th, 2012. Present are Commissioners Palacios Precinct 2, uh, Flores Precinct 3, Palacios Precinct 4, and myself. We have a quorum. Please join us in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Townsend, could you? Dear Father in heaven, we gather together today to do work for the county, and we hope to work all together for the common good. We ask you to bless our county, bless our nation, bless our families. Uh, help us always to remember the people who are fighting for us and keep them safe. Um, thank you, dear Lord, for all the blessings that you give us. And we ask all of this in your name. Amen. All right. Any concerns with the consent agenda, sir? Yes, Judge, I would like to ask that uh, consent agenda item 5A and uh, just 5A, I'm sorry, just 5A be pulled for discussion. Excuse me, sorry. 6A as well, please. 5A and 6A. And 6A? Yes. All right, the motion is to. Uh, um, 5A and 6A, no need, action on both, please. We need to. Oh, okay. Need a motion. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda except for 5A and 6A. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number five, 5A. 5A, Judge, uh, the uh, attached monthly report is incorrect. No, no, no. 5A is under the county judge's office. There's no action under okay, 5A no action or 6A. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Karina Cardoza with the Public Affairs Division. Item 5A reads, approval of a proclamation declaring November 2012 as National Hospice and Palliative Care Month. And I would like to introduce a special guest that's with us today. We have Ms. Linda Bailly. She is the administrator of SEMA Hospice. And I'd like to ask her to come say a few words about uh, hospice care and about what this month means. Good morning. Um, I'd like to thank the Commissioner's Court for giving me the opportunity to come in and talk to you a little bit about National Hospice Month. Um, November is National Hospice Month, and um, one of the things that we want to focus on is bringing awareness to the community about this uh, very important resource that is out there for those patients that are at the end of life that are uh, dealing with a terminal diagnosis. Um, where they have been given a prognosis of six months or less. Um, hospice is nationwide. Uh, the resources available uh, to these patients and their families are, of course, the clinical, the skilled nursing, the spiritual care, the psychosocial, uh, to help these uh, patients and their families deal with the dying process. Um, again, I want to thank each and every one of you for giving me the opportunity to be here uh, this morning. Thank you. And if I may read the proclamation. Proclamation declaring November 2012 as National Hospice and Palliative Care Month. Whereas hospice and palliative care provide the highest quality of care to patients and families and bring comfort, love, and respect for all those they serve in communities across the nation and here in Hidalgo County, Texas. And whereas hospice care and palliative care providers take the time to ask what's important to those they are caring for and listen to what their patients and families say. And whereas hospice and palliative care professionals, including physicians, nurses, social workers, therapists, counselors, health aides, and clergy, providing comprehensive and compassionate care, make the wishes of each patient and family a priority. And whereas through pain management and symptom control, caregiver training and assistance, and emotional and spiritual support, allowing patients to live fully up until the final moment, surrounded and supported by the faces of loved ones, friends, and committed caregivers. And whereas every year more than 1.6 million Americans living with life-limiting illness and their families received care from the nation's hospice programs in communities throughout the United States. 
And whereas more than 468,000 trained volunteers contribute 22 million hours of service to hospice programs annually, and whereas hospice and palliative care providers encourage all people to learn more about options of care and to share their wishes with their family, loved ones, and their health care professionals. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court does hereby proclaim November 2012 as National Hospice and Palliative Care Month and encourage citizens to increase their understanding and awareness of care at the end of life and to observe this month with appropriate activities and programs. Dated this 30th day of October 2012. Check. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries now. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're going to make you sit or stand right there in the middle. <laughs> from Alamo or from where? Thank you, ma'am. All right, item uh, six, Mr. Guerra. Thank you, Judge. Uh, item six, A, one and two, there's no action at this time, unless there's action to be taken further down the agenda. Uh, item six, B, um, I will reserve for later in the agenda. There is a uh, Board of Judges meeting that uh, staff is attending to give an update, uh, and I'm hoping that uh, uh, they'll be here, uh, if we're still here, to give an update. That 6B is in boy? 6B is in boy, yes. Uh, I'd like to go to uh, 6C. Uh, I am asking approval for uh, our IT director to travel to Fort Worth. Uh, and this is for a tech share planning meeting, uh, which is to be held uh, this uh, next month, November 28th through the 30th. In action? Yes, sir. Please. Sir. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge Commissioners, I do have uh, the uh, approval of the 2013 proposed holidays back on the agenda. Uh, again, uh, what I presented last time, uh, I am asking for the same action uh, to approve the 2013 uh, holidays uh, to include uh, this year, December 31st. Uh, our 2013 schedule will include next year, December 31st. There seems to be some confusion. Uh, on any given year, it, it, uh, it implies that we have more holidays in that year than we do because one is from a prior year. So I'm asking for the 2013 uh, proposed holidays to include New Year's, Martin Luther King Day, President's Day, Good Friday, Easter, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Labor Day, Columbus Day, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving Day, and Christmas Day, New Year's Eve. There is an attached schedule from other counties that, we pro that we're providing to the court. Uh, what, what yeah. the difference? How well, many days? If, if I may, like we're a... right, if I may, the average is 13, Judge I'm, Commissioners. I mean, have... uh, uh, for a given year is 14. The average is 13. Uh, El Paso County, 17 holidays. Travis County, 14 holidays. Williamson County, 14 holidays. Cameron County, 13 holidays. You have Fort Bend and Montgomery who do 12. Uh, Collin does 10. Bear, 13. Tarrant, 12. Uh, Harris, 10. Dallas has nine holidays. Again, Can you do away with Columbus Day? Columbus. I know founded America, but that was years ago. <laughs> <laughs> None of his relatives are going to come. <laughs> so, uh, again, I did include that schedule. All right. Uh, did you want to uh, I say I want to something? say something. I was hoping you'd see my little eyes, because usually you vote and then let me speak. No, I that's think not, I, that's not correct. When well, you stand it was up last there, week. every time we've given you and <laughs> everyone else every an time, opportunity to make a <clears throat> hold on just a minute to make a statement before we act on it. We what happened last week? 
you can go ahead and make that statement. Okay. I handed out a uh, paper that I received. It says, Mac Allen uh, tops Wall Street Journal's poorest cities in America, palm trees and poverty. The Wall Street Journal has released its list for the top richest and the top 10 poorest cities. McAllen took home the top honors on the poorest list with a median income of $31,077. Brownsville came in close with a second income of $32,070. No other uh, Texas city made either list rich or poor. How accurate these are, it's hard to say. It talks about the drug money. That, that's not counted uh, anything here. but. That kind of money doesn't make it into this list. Nevertheless, the list is bad news for people who uh, ever hope to make decent living. McAllen, Edinburgh, Mission uh, has a medium income of, I said, $31,077. Population is 7, 797,810, which is the 68th highest. Unemployment rate is 12%, which is the 34th highest. And the precinct household poverty line is 377 the highest. Also on the second page, it talks about Brownsville and Harlingen. Uh, their income is 32,070. Population, they're 124th highest, which is 414,000. Unemployment rate is 11.8, which is 36th highest. And the precinct uh, poverty line is 34,100, which is the second highest. And it says the rest of the country may be an economic toilet bowl. So I'll let y'all read the rest of it. But uh, I noticed that we're talking 15 holidays, and my question on there is, I know that the Federal Reserve only has 10, banks only have 10, and the average citizen takes three or four. So our question was, why does the county that pays well uh, need uh, 15 holidays? Thank you. Okay, let's go back to the question, Balde. Okay. The one Commissioner Flores asked. Valde, uh, Columbus Day was on a Monday this past year, right? Columbus, Columbus Day, yes, and in 2013, Columbus Day will be, be on a easy. Monday. It'll be on a what? On a Monday as well. Every year it goes up one. Okay, well, October 14th for Columbus Day of 2013 falls on a Monday. Okay, so every year it's a different day then. It's got to be the same day. If, if, every year it'll go up one day, one day. It's like your birthday. Right. If it was Saturday, the next year it's going to be a Sunday. Commissioner, uh, <laughs> Again, in looking at the schedule that was put together, um, yeah. they did note that uh, no, unless it's a leap year, but leap year was last year. Well, for 2012, Columbus Day was October 8th. For next year, it'll be October 14th. So it's not really a day. It's so it, the day changes, but the but the uh, the day of the week stays the we same. Need, I don't think we need Columbus Day. I think one day will really make a difference for the county. Okay. So if we eliminate Columbus Day, then we would be looking at uh, all that I stated yeah. less Columbus Day. Mm -hmm. Right. Is that, are you, do you agree with that? We'll be in a state average at that okay. point. Okay. Yes. And again, I included uh, for purposes of, of this year, uh, uh, I am including December 31st. Uh, for the 2012 schedule, but again, the 2013 includes that date so that there's no more, as Mr. Fraster brought up uh, last year, and we had a discussion after, uh, last week afterwards, uh, so we won't, that won't happen uh, again. So I'm also uh, including the uh, December 31st of this year. So move for approval for the holiday schedule to exclude To exclude Columbus, Columbus Day, Day for 2013. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 I motion carries unanimous. That was yes, unanimously. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Item E uh, is uh, we have two parts to item E: request an exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code Section 262024A6, any land or right of way. Uh, Marty, uh, I'm asking the court uh, to entertain uh, and to enter into a lease agreement. Well, first we have the exemption. I'm sorry. Yes. We recommended no action on that particular item because the exemption, as stated on the agenda caption, is for land or right of way. Uh, and, and, the, uh, and the approval that, uh, that you are going to grant is for leasing of a building. And, and under, I, under Attorney General opinion, MW-535. MW? MW-535, Marquardt opinion issued in 1982, 
states that a lease for land building in the buildings on the land can be exempted and does qualify for the exemption. Right. And to add to that, the county and special district law, chapter section 18.19, uh, under the fiscal administration uh, makes uh, actually states that and then makes reference to AG opinion MW 535. Balde, did you clarify that uh, issue of, uh, of the, the terms of the lease that yes, sir, uh, were we in did. dispute between the county and the Yes, sir, we did. And was it to our satisfaction? Yes, sir. It was to, it, it was, uh, it was uh, under our terms and conditions. Okay. Marty, is the DA going to uh, confirm that? The DA's office? We got that from the district attorney's office, Mr. Ferrazzo. That's, that's who, uh, it, Mr. Crane was out of town. Okay. And I en enlisted their help. I've advised Mr. Crane of what happened. I had always known that it could happen, but I wanted it to be covered. Mm -hmm. And so Ms. Josephine Ramirez and, uh, is not feeling well today, so Victor is covering for her. But they are of the same <laughs> opinion. opinion. Good morning, commissioners. That's correct. Valde quoted the, the provision yes, of the, of the uh, Texas Practice Code that makes a distinction that I believe Mr. Frasso was concerned about between real property and personal property. The real, real property, for the purpose of the lease, does not require the bid process. So we can act on it and we can lease? Yes, sir. All right. Move for approval. What, what about the cost? Are the costs included? Well, in we're, first to, we're first doing the exemption. Okay. Need a second? Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. You, do you want the discussion is what, sir? A dollar. Uh, they need. They want to know how much per foot. Uh, it's a dollar a square foot, correct? For both leases, yes. yes. A dollar a square foot. Is there any other questions? Uh, there is a total between both leases of thirteen thousand square feet. Five thousand for HR. Uh, 8,000 for county judge's office, which will include the public affairs division and, uh, if I'm not mistaken, also the Office of Emergency Management. That's correct. And any other departments that may need to be accommodated if we find the room for them. Now, let me preface this by telling you that we attempted to find space within county property. Our first attempt was the Emerald Building, of which uh, came in over budget, so that was not feasible for us. The second attempt was with the city of Edinburgh, and although they did offer an interlocal agreement, it was uh, late in the process that they agreed to do improvements. We had already looked into something because of the time constraints. So attempts were made to go other avenues. I will also state for the court that we normally, customarily, although we don't have to, do bid out our leases. In this case, we decided to go with the market that is around the courthouse, which is a dollar, and maybe even as high as a dollar twenty-five. We stuck to our negotiations with a dollar, and thus we feel that this is the correct option to go, given the time constraints we have of relocating these offices. Marty, do we get a certification from the owner that the building is ready to be occupied? The owners have made, without any obligation on part of the county, extensive improvements. They know that the improvements are made on their expense. They have emailed us, of which I will have uh, a complete lease agreement to be reviewed by legal counsel. Uh, but most all of the terms, conditions, bid, uh, the bid amount, everything has been agreed to. And they are making improvements as we speak at no obligation to the county. Well, the if improvements we walked they're away. making, uh, Mr. Ufrasio, are, are very basic and they're part of their responsibility. They're working on the roof. And, on one uh, building, it's, it's, uh, it, it's uh, adding some walls. Uh, you know, what we do in our standard bids, and it's done on the owner's dime, and that is not incorporated into the lease. It is a lease. It is not triple net. It is a dollar a square foot. We are responsible, as with all our leases, for the utilities. Yeah. And, of course, the general cleaning of the maintenance of the offices. I was just wondering if they issue a certificate that uh, the building is free of mold or any such that thing. That is incorporated into the terms and conditions. Okay. All right, let's vote. Let's take them one at a time as to the item number six. So item one. 6E1 is the lease agreement, uh, uh, again, as Marty stated, for the county judge's office, public affairs, and emergency management. And that is uh, building is located at 302 West University here in Edinburgh. We have an initial two-year uh, term. 
uh, again with uh, our sole option to renew and extend for two additional one-year terms. And that's with Joe E. Garcia. Joe, I'm sorry, yes, Joe E. Garcia. All right, need a, need a motion. Rule, to, second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Aye, motion carries. The second would be to enter into lease agreement uh, between the county and Jack McClellan. Again, this would be for the purposes of housing our human resources department. Uh, that building is located at 208 West Cano here in Edinburgh. Uh, initial term, three years with the county. Again, sole option to renew and extend for two additional one-year terms. Motion for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Item number seven, our DA's office. Morning, Judge Commissioners. Uh, requesting approval of the Title IV-E Legal Services Contract, contract number 23941008, and the Child Welfare Services Contract 23940009, budgets for October 1st, 2012 through September 30th, 2013. So, Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item uh, number two is approval for county judge to sign the following documents. A is the budget, B is the signature authority, authority designation, and C is the Federal Funding uh, Accountability and Transparency Act. So moved. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item uh, 7B, there will be no action. We're pending a uh, audit report by the auditors. Thank you. What, what item will there not be action on? B. 7B. 7B. All right. One, two. Item 8, Sheriff's Office. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, morning. Commissioners. Lieutenant Rafael Garas, on behalf of the Sheriff, Lupe Trevino. Of item uh, 8A, Sheriff's Office, OC, Deft, uh, request for approval for item 1. Approval of the Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force, be, a, agreement between the Hidalgo County Sheriff's Office and the Drug Enforcement Administration, McAllen District Office, Houston Division Office, OCDTF Strike Force Group. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 carries. Item two is approval of uh, certification of revenues as certified by the County Auditor for the OCDETF uh, grant contract. So moved. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item three is approval to appropriate the OC Deft grant award in the amount of $18,000 in reference to investigation number SW-TXS-0861. Check. Check. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And item B, Judge, I have three items. The last will be a no action item. Item uh, first is State uh, Criminal Alien Assistance Program, the SCAP grant. Uh, one is authorization and approval to accept State Criminal Alliance Alien Assistance Program, the SCAP 2012 grant in the amount of $43,101. Check. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two is approval of certification of revenues for the State Criminal Alien Assistance Program, the SCAP grant. The 2012 grant in the amount of $43,101. Check. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And our third and final item, we're requesting no action at this time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good day. Item nine, our health department. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Uh, item 9A, discussion and action including but not limited to indigent health care programs and or, or expenditures. Uh, just to let you know, sir, next week is on the 6th, we'll be having, we're uh, on the agenda to have a public hearing to review, discuss some of the 1115 waiver issues. We're going to uh, make a, a general announcement, invite some folks to, to come listen in on, on the updated hearing that we we're going to present to you all. Uh, so that'll be scheduled for next week. That's that's the only thing on that item, sir. Approved. Sorry. We need approval. That's your discussion approval. No, uh, we don't need approval of that. Just informing the, yeah. that you all that we're having that next week. Item B is discussion and approval of 1115 waiver document in 1115 waiver plan. There was a concern by auditor's office that the plan was not attached. We received the, 
the initial plan at 3.20 this morning from our, our state consultants. Uh, that was submitted electronically to Mr. Ufrasio's office this morning at 8, also to all the other offices. We are going to go ahead and follow up with a hard copy to his office as well today via courier. Uh, this, is the, this is the initial plan uh, that does the needs assessment, the partnership, IGT planning, et cetera. It covers the initial startup of the plan, the first half of the plan. The second half of the plan is due November 16th, and then the finalization of all the plans by the state will be December 31st. But we got to get this into the state so they can review it and assess it, and then on November 16th, we'll get the second half into the state, and then the state on December 31st will let us know if it meets all their needs before they send it to CMS at, in Washington. So uh, you all will have a copy of this, and Mr. Fadasio has a copy. You have a question, Mr. Fadasio? Yeah. So I guess the approval it is only of the 1115 waiver plan, right? Of the plan, of this initial Sorry. first part of the plan, the assessment and everything. That's it. So any questions on that, Judge, or anything? Yeah. Need some action? Okay. Yes, sir. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. The next item is uh, item C, is requesting authorization for the county judge to sign the EFT authorization agreement. This revision to the current authorization will redirect Medicare reimbursements to Hidalgo County Special Revenue Bank Account. This has been recommended by the auditor's office on a new uh, banking procedure that they're recommending. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. This next item discussion approval of county auditor's affidavit for payment of membership dues for RECA 1041. Uh, there, this has been brought up before. There's a concern about that affidavit. Mr. Mr. Crane, I think you had a concern about it. Yeah, on, on your auditor concerns, auditor quotes uh, local government code section 113064, and he states if the auditor considers it necessary, the auditor may require a claim, bill, or account quote, be verified or by, by an affidavit indicating the correctness. We have no problem with an affidavit that indicates the correctness of the amount, but the affidavit goes farther than that and goes beyond uh, stating the correctness of the amount owed. So what, for that- What is the recommendation? For the recommendation is we would be happy to sign an affidavit as far as the amount of the bill, but as far as the other things in the affidavit, we don't believe that is necessary or legal to require uh, Mr. Uh, the who, health department. Who is department. requesting that affidavit? The auditor is. Our auditor? Okay. And that affidavit is require every uh, payment for membership dues, Judge, to make sure that there's compliance with the state law. But um, I think the, the issue here is that you're requiring more than what the law re is requesting, according to Mr. Crane, anyway. Uh, so this, this affidavit is signed and, and required from everyone that uh, is requesting okay, how, payment. How, how did we do it last year? Did, he, well, did we do it the same thing? To, the thing with this, sir, that there's a concern about lobbying issues involved with this affidavit and the associations that, that bring on lob some, uh, yeah. they may hire lobbyists or yeah, consultants to deal with particular is, issues. As you know, we, we as a county health it. department or any department in the county cannot lobby, cannot do any of those things. Right. So for their- Betty, the problem is how can you in good faith, sign such an affidavit when you don't know what they're doing. That's, that's Any more than I can. I refuse to sign them because I don't know what these agencies are doing. Well, the auditor I, is requesting that we sign something that says that they're not engaged in lobbying or influencing legislation. We have absolutely no knowledge of what they do. And Judge, just for the record, you bring up a very good point. The only way you can sign an affidavit is if you have personal knowledge. Correct. And you do not have personal knowledge of what these organizations do. And in some cases, uh, well, I think I'll, the, I'll the form indicates to the best of your knowledge. So if you are not aware of any, then. But it also, is, you're signing it under, under oath, and you're also required to have knowledge in order to sign it. So to the best of your knowledge does not mean you, it would still make you go and have knowledge of the organization. And there's no way. In most cases, somebody down here is going to have knowledge of what an organization does. It's not even located in the ballot. The bottom line on this, Judge, is that we need to get the bill paid, you know, and we just need to pay that association membership. And there's other associate memberships from other organizations that have come before you here as well, and there's been concerns similar to this. My, my only thing is I'm just, this is for the T, uh, Texas Indigent 
Healthcare Association, and I know I'm going to bring forward another one from Texas Association of Local Health Officials in the next month or so. So, and I know there's been the Sheriff's Office, the County Judges Association, all these other associations have come forward, and there's been an ongoing discussion. I mean, their whole purpose for existence is to lobby, to is to influence. So how in the world can you go out there and sign an affidavit that they're not doing it? I'm not going to sign it, but I mean, you're, you're an individual. You decide whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm going by, that's why, I, that's why I go to legal counsel and ask for, for advice. My only thing is, is that there, there needs to be, uh, maybe there could be some common ground on this and look at some kind of requirement that, I know for all the grants that we submit, we submit that there is a non-lobbying component to all our grants, there's affidavit signed for that, all these things, but when it comes to an association, I mean, we, we are not clear on what all they do and who they hire and who they talk to and how they conduct business. I mean, that's a concern. I'm just bringing it up for your attention. I'm just trying to get this bill paid, sir. That's all I'm trying to do. All right, so you're not requesting any action then? Well, he we, is requesting we, action. We, of the yeah, I'm requesting action. We've got to get the bill paid. So yeah. it's more than just our attention. You want to modify the terms of the affidavit? Or? I'm not an attorney, sir, so I can't modify them. My only thing is, sir, I'm just trying to get a bill paid. That's all. Judge, the, the section the auditor is quoting on the local government code, and I read it to you. Uh, he can require an affidavit indicating its correctness. Well, correctness would be the amount of the affidavit. There's nothing in here that states it can include such other items as he has listed on his affidavit. Then we ought to then uh, not put Eddie in a very precarious position and just simply require the approval of county auditor's affidavit for the payment of membership dues to just state the amount. The amount. Judge Tell you what we could do, we can either request an opinion from the district attorney's office or from the attorney general's office regarding this matter, and then we can go forward from there. Because this is not going to be only this association, it's going to be other associations. This, this applies to all the other associations as well. And this form has always been required and it's always been signed by individuals saying, stating what is, that. What is the desire of the court? I would recommend to the court that, that you approve the payment of this bill without the affidavit. All right. Based on the advice of the legal counsel, so we'll Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, sir. Item 10, our fire marshal. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. Uh, we'll be taking no action on this item. However, I did want to take this opportunity to update the court to the current situation with the Lin San Manuel Fire Department. Um, currently everything that the county has been asked for has been completed. Uh, what we are waiting for right now is for the bylaws to be read, voted on, and accepted by the Lin San Manuel Fire Department. Uh, upon that approval we'll be able to uh, agree to a new contract. Uh, and I do believe that they will be voting on that approximately uh, on the 15th of November. All right. And that, that is our current situation. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Item 11, uh, our adult probation. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. Good morning, uh, sir. Arnold Patrick with the Adult Probation Department. Uh, item 11A1, um, asking for approval to accept the Hidalgo County Veterans Court grant from the Office of the Governor of Criminal Justice Division for $98,911.20. And you're asking us to approve one, two, and three, am I correct? Correct. Approval so of the certification of revenue and approval of appropriation of funds. So moved, Judge. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge, uh, on item 11B, we're asking for no action. All right, sir. Thank you. Item 12, Urban County. Mr. Patrick, was that 11B the entire? There was no 11B? action. I, I had a note that only 11B, 3, 4, and 5 were not going to be approved for no action. He, he requested no action on the entire uh, 11B. Okay, thank you. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. My name morning, is Esther Gonzalez. I'm with uh, Urban County Program. Item 12A1, requesting <clears throat> excuse me, exemption from com competitive building requirements under the Texas Local Government Code 262.024A4 for professional engineering services. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. 
Aye. Motion carries. Item two, presentation of the scoring grid for the purpose of ranking by commissioner's court of at least three engineering firms from the county's approved pool as graded and evaluated by the city of Westlaco Urban County Program and Hidalgo County Purchasing Department in connection with and funded through Hidalgo County Urban County Program year 24, 2011, City of Westlaco Water Sewer Improvements. The professional service firms were graded as follows. Lefebvre Environmental and Management Consulting was 92.33%. DOS Logistics Inc, 92%. SDI Engineering, 85%. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item three, authority to negotiate a professional engineering service contract with the highest ranked firm of Lefevre Environmental and Management Consulting LLC for professional engineering services for Urban County Program Year 24, 2011 City of Westlaco Water Sewer Improvements Project. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B, the City of Ed Couch and Urban County Program are requesting authorization to cancel an existing contract with Guzman and Munoz Engineering and Serene Inc. in the amount of $12,519 for 2011, 2011 sidewalks project. The city was unable to attain easements for the construction of the sidewalks and decided to cancel the project. Urban County Program has received reimbursement from the City of Ed Couch for the work completed and paid to the engineer. So there was a lot of money spent on that? Or? I'm not familiar with the, the background, I'm sorry. Uh, it's it, 12,000, it, isn't it? The background states that there was a 60% paid for the professional service. Is it directly from their funds or from Urban County funds? I'm not familiar with the background of What's entirely, that, sorry. That it's Urban County funds. Well, the question is, is whether or not, it does say they were reimbursed. The question is, were they reimbursed for all the federal funds spent exactly. for the project? That's, what I'm, that's my question. I apologize. I, I'm not familiar with the background completely. All right. Sorry. Take my look at it. Yeah, we can. Uh, why don't we move it to next week? If that's okay with you. That's, that's that way you can get that information for us. We want to make sure the federal government is satisfied. All right. 12. Item C. Item C, under Urban County Program on behalf of Precinct Number 1, is requesting consideration and action to award and end to enter into a construction contract with Metro Electric, Inc. for a street improvement solar lights project located within Precinct 1 area. Total contract amount $81,084, utilizing Precinct Number 1, year 24, 2011 street improvements solar light funds. Move for approval. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D, requesting exemption from competitive bid bidding requirements under the Texas Local Government Code 262.024A4 for professional engineering, engineering services construct construction oversight. Move for approval. Check. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Aye, motion carries. Item two, presentation of the scoring grid for the purpose of ranking by commissioner's court of at least three engineering firms from the county's approved pool as graded and evaluated by the city of La, La Villa, Urban County Program, and Hidalgo County Purchasing Department in connection with and funded through Hidalgo County, Urban County Program year 24, 2011, city of La Villa, water sewer improvements projects. The professional service firms were graded as follows. Dan and Mom Engineering Corporation, 94.67%. Meldon and Hunt Engineering, Inc., 93.33%. SMB Infrastructure Engineering, 91.33%. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item three, authority to negotiate professional engineering service contract with the highest ranked firm of Dan and Baum Engineering Corporation for professional engineering services, construction oversight for Urban County Program Year 24, 2011, City of La Villa, Water Sewer Improvements Project. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Item 13, our elections office.
Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Commissioners. A uh, quick update on the uh, chart that you are receiving. We, as of yesterday, had almost 68,000 voters go out and vote. Now, for a total of 306,758 registered voters, we are still at a low 22 percent. So we're here to encourage everyone. You've got four more days of early voting. Early voting ends this November 2nd. And so please get out to the polls and, and, and vote. We've got 28 permanent uh, early voting locations throughout the county and the two mobile units that are doing exceptionally <coughs> well. You can see here on this chart that they have even surpassed some of our permanent locations. So this is working very well, but we still need all the voters of Hidalgo County to head out to the polls and vote. They still have, of course, uh, November 6th, Election Day, but it's important to note that you will not be able to vote at every location. You have to find the poll location that is representative of your precinct and go vote there. So that makes it a little bit more difficult. So head out there and vote now. Uh, are there any questions over this? We've got yeah, some good totals. We're looking at the graph, and we're, we're looking at you went ahead and put one column in blue and one in red. I know. I gave you that, and in fact, I removed them from here because the high, I asked my office, where are the titles, where is the legend? So we'll be emailing that to you. Uh, I apologize. I didn't review that before the copies were made for me to bring. So the higher one, of course, is now, 2012. We are over 18,725 votes compared to the first eight days of early voting in 2008. We've surpassed... 2008, but it's still quite low at this point. 2008 is in red. Is that the, the, let me get mine. The one that is, the, lower one, the, red one. the blue is now where we are over. You can see on the chart that we had 13,831 uh, votes on first day, and in 2008 we had 9,464. So the blue is now, and the red is 2008. The only but, day we had more was yesterday. On I'm sorry, sir? Yesterday we had more in 2008. Yes, we did. Yesterday we actually decreased uh, uh, by a couple of hundred votes, so yeah. we don't want that to continue. How many people are registered, you said? 306,758. And in 2008 we were at about 306,500, so we're not too far off from the amount of registered voters, we had uh, about 43% go out and vote in 2008. So we're right under halfway there now, and we need to surpass it. So encouraging everyone to get out there to vote. All right, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I have got 13A, discussion and or action to approve uh, letter B, A1-34940, approval of full contract for election services between Hidalgo County and the Monte Alto Independent School District for their election to be held November 6, 2012. Could you cover all of them? In I was going service? to ask if I could do that. Uh, so this is approval to uh, for Monte Alto Independent School District, the City of Edinburgh, La Jolla Independent School District, Westlaco Independent School District, La Villa Independent School District, Far San Juan Alamo Independent School District, City of Westlaco, Hidalgo Independent School District for their uh, election to be held November 6, 2012. But if we've already started early vote on this. It, it's still legal, sir. We, the contract, and of course, Mr. Crane can better respond to that. All right, move for approval. Second. Need, a, need a second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. And letter J is requesting permission to accumulate uh, and accrue compensatory time for election department employees during the 2012 general election and of course because of the 15 additional elections to be run by our office for the uniform election date of November 6th and there is a, a handout. We will not go over the 240 so there will be no overtime pay but we do have you can see here total for all three departments 12,293 uh, hours. Now the reason is because usually between elections we are able to bring down the comp time, but because we have had one election follow another, we've not been, I've not been able to give my staff any time off. Yes, ma'am. If there I are no a... questions, we're entertain a motion to approve. Move approval. Second. 
Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item 14, our Texas AgriLife Extension Services. Adelita, good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. I think you have all the paperwork here that was uh, handed to our auditor. These were two isolated cases where uh, the gasoline cart that Ms. Cristina Perez has did not work, and we had to use our personal cards. And one is for $50, and the other one is for $40. Move approval to second. the second then, right? Yeah. yeah. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item 15, our WIC program. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Good morning. I'm here to, for our WIC grant, we got our contract in, and this is just for the approval between DSHS and Hidalgo County for the provision of WIC services for FY. 2013 commencing October 1st, 2012 and ending March 31st, 2013. So moved. Second. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Number two is for Nutrition, Physical, Activity and Obesity Prevention Grant. It's a approval for a research sub-award agreement between Texas A&M Health Science Center and Hidalgo County Health and Human Services WIC Department in the amount of 12000 for the period of 6-30-2012 to 6-29-2013. So moved. Second. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item 16, our right-of-way. Uh, yes, Judge Commissioners, uh, Joe Payne with a right of uh, 16A, discussion authorization for county judge to execute earnest money contract to purchase property on Horn Road for drainage project in Precinct 4, and request county auditor to issue two manual checks, one to Valley Land and Title Company in the amount of $1,000 for the earnest money deposit, and one payable to Norma Lidia Alvarez in the amount of $100 as an option fee. So moved. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Item 17, our planning department. Yes, good morning, Judge. Commissioners, Raul Seen, Planning Administrator. Good morning, uh, sir. First item on the agenda is preliminary approval of variance request, Vista Ridge Acres Phase 4 subdivision. Uh, this is a subdivision uh, that was originally presented to Commissioner's Court back in uh, July. And uh, it is partially located in a flood zone. Um, and I'll just go ahead and explain the variance request. Um, our requirements and our subdivision rules require for a property that is being developed uh, within a flood zone to be taken out via letter map revision based on fill or letter map amendment. Um, the variance is to allow the subdivision to proceed uh, and the developer, what they're doing is, without those submittals to FEMA, and what they're doing is restricting the construction on the subdivision that is outside the flood zone, so there will be no construction within the flood zone. Therefore, there won't be a need to fill or amend anything uh, in the plat. Um, we're gradually transitioning away from, uh, from allowing any type of construction in a flood zone, even if it gets filled in or, or revised, unless adequate submittal is done to FEMA. Uh, in the past, I know the court has considered and, and we have as a staff recommended the, the pads and so forth, but uh, we've been looking at it with the floodplain administrator, Mr. Garza, and my department, uh, Mr. Olivares, the health department, and uh, the environmental compliance department as well, Mr. Ramirez, um, and, uh, and looking at uh, ways to try to address these issues without uh, putting in harm's way uh, uh, individuals that may be ultimately living in these uh, areas. So for this development, however, the, the, the actual uh, restriction on the plat is restricting construction outside the flood zone. Uh, the lots are a couple of acres, uh, about an acre, uh, oh, excuse me, over an acre or so. So there's a buildable area of at least half an acre in, in the areas outside the flood zone. Um, therefore, the, the, the variance is being requested. Uh, we don't have any objection from planning. Uh, we received a, a memo from health that uh, they don't have any objection to it. Obviously, if it's built outside the flood zone, the floodplain administrator has also looked at it 
uh, as a floodplain administrator and also uh, on behalf of the drainage district and with the regulations in place to restrict the construction outside the flood zones, at this time we don't see an issue with it. Um, and like I said, we're transitioning away from uh, allowing the construction within flood zones uh, without the proper FEMA. Now, what is this flood zone? Yes, sir. I mean, we, we're being told that it's going to flood if we have a significant rain. That is correct, sir. And uh, where if there's no uh, sewage that lines up, so we're going to have a septic tank. Where is that going to be located? Uh, Judge, there, the, there's a buildable area. About half of the lots uh, that are affected by the flood zone are outside the, are outside the flood zone. Excuse me. Uh, the, the flood zone encumbers the southern portion of some of the lots. Uh, however, gonna the, to, it's going to have to be built up. Well, the, the northern build. portion is already built up, Commissioner. It's already outside the flood zone. The northern no, no, portion. No, but of I mean, lots. the construction, the actual construction, is going to have to be up higher, or what? Uh, well, yeah, they're proposing 18, 18 inches at our typical above natural ground or above, above the uh, the roadway. To answer the judge's questions, they're going to be building outside the flood zone, so the septic tanks themselves will not be in the flood zone, nor the buildings themselves. But Only they, the lots in the rear would no, be affected. Well, they have to build it up. When it rains, all there, there's going to be flooding all around the house. It's just like what happened in Precinct Three that we got sued. Yeah, yeah so Judge, we, but in this, we shouldn't let it. Well, well, let me let me just clarify. They're not building inside the flood zone. Oh, yeah, but uh, the they won't build anything inside the flood zone, Judge. That's the restriction, the plat restriction. The ones you're referring to when they build the pads and the waters around them, uh, like Palo Rojo. So I was one of the subdivisions. I was in a flood zone that they built the pads and so if it's it not floods, as bad as the one on it's going to be around yes judge it's those i would say yes that. definitely do Actually, you know how much of that lot is going to flood uh, according to yes the according to the the engineering report and the uh, fema map it shows the southern uh, the lot is 636 feet in depth sir and it shows about 300 feet to be the southern portion and it's only Four lots, oh, excuse me, it's only uh, six lots to get affected. The southern 300 feet, so they have 320 feet in the front to build outside the flood zone. There will be no construction allowed by my department or by the floodplain administrator because it has to go through both departments. It's, it's partly in the flood zone. The whole lot is not encumbered by the flood zone, only the southern 300 feet. The northern 340 feet, it's outside the flood zone, and that's where they're going to build the home, the septic. Obviously, my office will regulate that. Floodplain regulate that, and the environmental health will regulate that as well. Yeah, We're talking about another method of uh, providing drainage would be some kind of a pond. Well, the, the, in this situation here, Judge, there is a drain ditch adjacent to the property which they are discharging into, sir. Uh, they are putting in storm sewer. They are putting in inlets. Uh, so that's definitely assisting this development. I just want to be clear that we are not recommending that they build it in a flood zone. We're, the, the, the property is portion of it, six lots, the southern portion of the property is in the flood zone. The northern 300 feet is outside the flood zone. In the, building, in the northern 300 feet, elevate the natural 18 inches like we require everybody else in the county that's outside the flood zone to elevate. Nothing more, nothing less. All right. They and the septic tank will be installed in natural ground outside the flood zone. We don't see an issue with that. As far as this is like building anywhere else in the county that's not but in a flood zone. The issue zone. here is the variance that they're requesting for the other side. For the south side, there's yeah. no construction there at all. There will be no construction on those lots. It's regulated on the plat. It's going to be managed by my department, by the floodplain administration department, and do the Do you have department. a map with you? That'll I sure do. It should be in your packet, Judge, but I, we do have a map. May I approach? Yes. And the people will be told, I mean, the people that are buying, are, with, how are they going to be given notice? Well, what we, uh, what we are recommending, Judge, is we get something in writing from the developer, the sample. Uh, yes. Uh, 
Part of the requirement that we have judged currently at this time is to require a sample deed from all developers during the plat process, and we have it on file with our office. And in there, we will uh, request that the developer provide us written confirmation, both in English and Spanish, of the disclosure, which they do disclose it, but we'll um, be extra, I guess, uh, thorough in, in, in those requirements. But Steve, we do have sample deeds that we require Steve, this time. can we prepare a, a, uh, a notice that can be that can be requ requested that be provided to the potential buyer. Well, I think what we can do is just take the plat note where it says there'll be no yes, construction sir. on in in the flood zone for the lot, and the plat notes notice to the public, and they can just if, if what the judge is asking is just get a copy of that notice. Steve, some them. of the people that are going to be buying it may not be as educated or well, as I was knowledgeable say, take about the plat flood zone. Note, take the plat note. Put it on a piece of paper and notice and require the developer to give that to any prospective buyers. No, I think we, we can require the notice, we can prepare it. Uh, we can do that, and as, as exactly I mentioned, we do problem. get we do require all developers, all developers to provide us a sample deed of what they're going to be selling the client, along with the restrictions and so forth, and we can make sure that's on there as well. And in addition to that, we can require just a page that discloses in clear. That's what I'm requiring. We, we can do that, Judge. We can do that through my office. That's not right. a problem. We'll make we sure we get that sure from the developer. just want to make sure that the potential future buyers understand what they're buying. When it comes for final, Judge, I will attach that document and present it to the commissioner's court. So you'll see what the developer's providing as far as the disclosure. I think that's a fine. Uh, we've done it in other areas, Judge, yes. and we have no objection to that. Ms. Townsend? And what happens if they don't? In if the they future, don't what? If they don't follow the rules and they don't follow this thing that they have signed off on and everything, what happens if they don't? What has the county got the right to do? Can we sue? That's my, that, that was my question a while ago. No, once we approve it, it's, it's a different ballgame. Right now, we have the authority to reject it. Uh, but once it's approved, subject to whatever variances uh, we're agreeing to or we would ultimately agree to, uh, once they're in place, that developer has an interest, a property right, or a substantial interest in making sure that we allow development. That's what that lawsuit was about a few years ago. You know, I, I, that was a different thing. I, that was, you know, I'm not going to compare apples and oranges. That may have had mitigating circumstances that made it so we lost that. But that doesn't mean we're always going to lose them. And we need to step up to the plate and say, you know, you don't follow the rules and you put these people in a flood zone and the taxpayers have to come back and fix it, then I think we ought to sue somebody. And I'm tired of the developers getting their way all the time. So I think we, I don't know. I just don't want to give them a, a blank check. Thanks. Judge, as a staff, we, we agree, obviously, with what we're trying to do, the intent, and that's why I, I, I made it clear that they're going to be constructing outside the flood zone. There's plenty of area to construct in a non-flood zone area. The septic tank will be in a non-flood zone area. It won't be pads filled up. If this development was encumbered completely by a flood zone, then, then our position would be different. And we were changing our position on that after discussing with our floodplain administrator, which is also our district manager, and district manager. Uh, Judge. Our health department director. Excuse me, Robert. Yes, sir. Yes, Commissioner. You know, based on the discussion and concerns expressed, what do we table this item and bring it back later? Uh, the wishes of the court. I'm here to serve the court. Whatever the do court wishes. Do we have any information about what really happens when there's a <coughs> two or three inch rainfall in that area? Any pictures? Any um, anybody with we can, knowledge? We can look at it, Judge. I know that. Uh, from what I recall, a staff member went out there from the county and uh, after a heavy rain, and it appeared that, uh, that everything seemed to be flowing uh, southerly in the low area and into the drain ditch that's currently there. There was no indication of any heavy uh, ponding or, or flooding. Uh, in the last heavy rain we had, there again, you know, it's just a normal heavy rain. It's not a hurricane rain, so. And these FEMA Again, maps are based on hurricane rain. I think Commissioner Palacios has a legitimate request that we look at it a little closer. Of course. And uh, okay. bring it back some other, whenever you think would be appropriate. Uh, I'd be more than happy. Uh, the only direction that I, that I would request of the court is what uh, discussions or 
what information the court would like to see or, or know so well, I can well, be prepared to present it again to the court? The concern expressed by a member of the public, I would like to know what remedies do we have or what authority do we have to stop somebody from the team violation with them, whatever the approval calls for. On the plan, it's going to stay, you cannot build here. The question becomes, what if they do? What authority do we have or what responsibility do we have? Well, if I'm answer that, uh, we have pretty strong authority under our floodplain program. Uh, our floodplain administrator and, and, his, and the administration that he has there gives a, a, a direct way to file injunctions and move people out of flood zones if so need. Uh, there, there's strong authority uh, to, to, to govern those type of construction, whether it be uh, a residence, whether it be a storage, whether it be a, anything, junkyard or anything like that. So there is so uh, who, legal who remedies. Who dropped in the ball then? Is the county dropping the ball? On what? Uh, on this type of situation. The Dallas Cowboys. Um, I'm, I'm, I apologize, I don't know. How many ball times can we file energy against somebody? Come again? Never. How many times can we file a lawsuit or something against a developer under these circumstances? Well, the developers that have developed, they either elevated the properties or the lots, so. Well, obviously, in the past, that has not happened. I think everybody's interested in avoiding uh, the yes, situation sir. where we have a heavy rain and that owner of that property, the subsequent buyer, the one that builds a home and is paid uh, on that lot, is going to be coming to the precinct, to the commissioner, and wanting to know why his land is underwater. I, I, we agree, and that's why I wouldn't be here recommending if the part of the property wasn't outside the flood zone, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, revisit it. All uh, right, sir. We'll Bring it back the, after we look and get that form definitely. prepared, the one about the notice. I will do that, Judge, of course. We've done that in the past, and we'll do it again, sir, of course. All right. There'll be no action on this one. I mean, couldn't they have a, couldn't they, the property they're not going to use, couldn't they use it as a... Uh, Maybe they can put a, a pond in there or something. Uh, basically what it is, a Commissioner, he could come back and re-cut out those property in the back and, and sell it without, he still retain it if he so chose, and then, and then we would just move forward where there would be no variance because he would be platting it. However, a lot of people, when they buy it, uh, they like to put goats and, you know, horses, ranch, because it's a one-acre ranch, 600 feet deep. And they and don't somebody mind. Somebody probably build a little house in there. And well, <laughs> and that's where we need to do our job, obviously. The planning, the health, and the floodplain administrator, and making sure that, th that we prevent them from constructing in the flood zone, uh, unless they meet look, proper look requirements. Look at it a little closer and bring it back. We can do that, Judge. Yes, With sir. different options. We will do that. All right, item two. Okay, uh, item two is RBA McAllen uh, subdivision. Again, preliminary subdivision, precinct four. And... Uh, this is just a, a one-lot subdivision. Uh, they're going to do a Donald General, is my understanding there. It has gone uh, before all the county departments, and it has been uh, reviewed and approved by the county departments. Also gotten a preliminary approval from the city of McAllen, so it is in order for preliminary approval so they may commence construction with the improvements on RBA McAllen subdivision. Okay, move for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, with G. Acre number... Nine subdivision. It's a 25 single family lot and eight commercial uh, lot subdivision uh, located in Precinct 1. And it has been uh, approved by the city of Alamo. It's in their ETJ. And it has been gone through the various uh, county departments, has been reviewed by the carriage departments, and uh, it's in order for preliminary approval so they may start construction uh, before receiving final approval. Approved. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. A reimbursement of cash deposit, Wajardo Acres subdivision. Um, the developer is requesting a cash deposit in the amount of 1500 to be reimbursed uh, to him for the installation of the septic tank. And we have the letter from health that uh, that work has been conducted and everything's in order for the release. Both approved. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Item 18, Precinct 3. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. Good morning, Mr. Verrett. 18A, 
Precinct 3 BCAP, Border Colonias SS Program, Road and Bridge Maintenance, approval to authorize supplement pay to one Assistant Field Operation Director position, slot number 0079, Road and Bridge, in the amount of 3,167.00 from Precinct 3, BCAP, slot number 8006, and pay allowance to employee number 160814, effective full pay period. Next, full, full pay period. Wait, wait, wait. 18A, 1, 2, and 3. Second. Those in favor, uh, indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. That's a one, two, and three, down. Judge? Yes, sir. Okay. Two, Just approval told. of interdepartmental no, transfer. No, it's already one, one, two, and three. One, two, and three, Mr. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Judge. Thank you, sir. Dallas Cowboys. Item 19, Mr. Cruz. Morning, Judge Commissioner Sergio Cruz, Department of Budget Management. Item 19A1 is approval of 2012 appropriation of funds for the County Records Management and Preservation Fund uh, in the amount of $35,445. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, 19A2 A and B is approval of certification of revenues as certified by the County Auditor and a appropriation of those funds for the Precinct 1 Drainage Improvement Project in the amount of $20,000. $339.31. And that is for, okay, Second. This is for the capitalization of the Precinct 1 drainage projects. Uh, capitalizing the road indicate, and bridge into the CO. Indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye, motion carries. Thank you, Judge Commissioner. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning again. Martha Salazar for the Purchasing Department. Starting off with uh, 20A12, A, B, and C, nothing to report or action to be taken. Item three, this is acceptance and approval of the five responses received for the RFQ, the pool of professional consultants is seek funding as titled on the agenda. On an as needed basis, there were three, I mean, pardon me, there were five responses. Park resources for mission, uh, J.G. Ortiz from West Laco, Guzman and uh, Munoz for Mercedes, Hollis Rutledge for Mission, and it's called the, Midi the Mitigation Specialist that's out of Missouri City, Texas. They all have met the minimum requirements and we're recommending that they be accepted for the pool. All five of them at one time? Yes. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item is ratification by Commissioner's Court at the request of the 370th District Court to be provided a copy of the sole response received on an as, uh, so as to proceed to the grading and scoring in the interest of time due to grant restrictions and deadlines for the RFP for a turnkey solution for middle and high school digital recovery and life skills program services for Hidalgo County, including the assignment if the court wishes of any other graders and scorers. The sole response received was from Paul Vesaldu and Associates. Approved. Second. What are we doing here, uh, Marty? I mean, the what is court the wishes What's the to, purpose of this? Request? This is a grant that was uh, approved and secured to do for what? the 370th. It is to uh, get GED services and high school diplomas and life skills services to those selected by the court of youth that have been in trouble or that are currently in trouble. That's the one that they came in a couple of weeks. It ago. came in. It's like for $125,000. Yeah. Uh, they have picked several. Uh, students to go through the program the and this is yeah, yeah. yes now uh, those in favor of the motion is made and seconded indicate by saying aye aye, aye. 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 motion carries may i just have some clarity so the court's not going to assign anyone else they'll yeah. just let the, the the judge grade and score it and i'll have it for you next week okay is that all right or do you want it, uh, nobody else okay the next one is presentation of the response well, whoever whoever the judge is well, it's a sole risk. He's, he's grading it because, albeit that we got one, it needs to be graded to make sure that they do meet the requirements. All right. Okay? Nope. Item five, presentation of the responsible vendor submitting the lowest and best bid received uh, for and meeting all the specifications. And this is for CRS2 catatonic rapid setting emulsified asphalt. There were two bidders, performance grade asphalt and Martin uh, mitigation gonna... mega lubricants and performance grade out. Um, Asphalt is the recommended bidder. Is the recommended awardee. Second. 
Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 6 is requesting approval to declare a surplus the items listed in Exhibit B vehicles as additional items to Exhibit A as approved by Commissioner's Court back on October the 16th as attached herein for the purposes of disposition through auction. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. I'm going to ask that item 7 be taken up altogether because it is all related. This is the annual request that, uh, that we issue, the court issues orders for the general fund budgets and any other applicable budgets for the following. The cutoff date for major purposes be November the 16th. The cutoff date for submission of requisitions for day-to-day -day purchases be December the 7th. And approval to notify all departments that if goods and services are not received by December 31st, they will be charged to their 2013 budgets. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, we are on, on item 8, requesting authority to utilize Lowe's through our membership and participation through the TCPN contract, R4954, and submit the credit line of $20,000 a month for the precincts and facilities management. What is it? Oh, this is for credit, right? What is it? This is in the event it's used. Yeah, we need it, right? Right. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B1, this is Precinct 2, requesting authority to advertise with approval of the plans and specifications developed of the project engineer, Raul Cecin, a uh, professional engineer through Hidalgo County's Planning Department Director for Precinct 2, Minnesota Road, west of I-Road Paving and Drainage Improvements Project. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two is acceptance and approval to award the best value proposal from the Jock Order Contractor Herrera and Hunt. This is $118,915.49 for the installation of seven new poles to include lighting material and any other pertinences as may be needed for baseball park located in Lopezville, Precinct 2. Approval. Check. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C1, Precinct 3, requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code 262-024-A4, a professional service. Move for approval. Check. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B is presentation of the scoring grid for the purposes of ranking by Commissioner's Court of the firms graded and evaluated through the county's pool of engineers. This is for road and bridge projects and drainage improvement projects for Precinct 3. The three that were scored, nominated and scored were Javierino Mosa 98, Quintanilla Headling Associates 93, and Rodriguez Engineering at 90. Does the court wish to grade them, Move I mean to rank them in the order Check. of their scores? Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Authority for the purchasing department to negotiate with the number one ranked Javier Hinojosa engineer. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D1, Precinct 4. This is a project that was begun by Precinct 4 and it was, it was done in accordance with uh, the competitive seal proposal method of delivery for constructions. It was the first time that the county has attempted to deliver a construction job under that method, which is available to counties. It has historically been available to school districts, uh, primarily in the past. It started out with an option to build an administration building in addition to a mechanical shop and also a storage facility. However, uh, funding became an issue and Two other issues became important to the project, that at the same time we have the possible housing of and construction of the district clerk's very much needed storage and document facility. Also you have a constable that needs uh, a place in which to be housed. Right now it is housed at the administration building. So it became evident as, the, as this project has evolved that a community resource center type complex is what is required. Obviously, Commissioner at the time does not have the funding, but does wish to seek that funding in this next new fiscal year through different uh, avenues and resources of finding funding. It is therefore uh, up to the court whether it wishes to piecemeal this project or go out and reject this project and then restructure it to become a complex and this facility, which is the mechanical shop, would be a component of that facility. So uh, I believe the commissioner. Yeah, is just a couple of comments. 
Obviously, uh, we were dealing with limited funding. The first time it went out, it came out over $2 million. Uh, back then, we were anticipating some funds coming in from the affluent line agreement with the City of Edinburgh. The uh, Faisal project came over budgeted. Obviously, some air we were waiting also on some airport, uh, the reimbursement for the City of Edinburgh for the airport property was about a million dollars. And then some of the additional funding we were hoping to grab uh, it, if, in fact, they came over budget, which it did, was some funding on unused brick and mortar dollars that were unused COs, which that was before the modular buildings came into play. So very limited funds. Uh, we're very optimistic that we're going to get um, uh, some of the fundings that we're hoping to help us with this project in the very near future. Uh, because of that, we want to, before we move forward on just one element of what we believe is our need within that area, we want to make sure that we have completely evaluated so we're not piecemealing uh, this project. Uh, the location of some of these facilities might be affected by the new records depot and some of the other facilities for the constables. So we want to make sure uh, that we do it the right way, uh, hence the reason why we'd like to uh, cancel it at this point in time. So the option here would be to reject the final negotiations with the number one rank proposer, OG Construction, for the new multipurpose facility and mechanical shop. Because that's the way it was titled. Obviously, right. the mechanical shop was the only one you could do at the time, which then started to kind of, the concept started to fall apart at that point because right. of the funding. Um, what are the, what is, your is that to your recommendation? To reject at this point, Commissioner, uh, it's not a project that we're going to scrap. It's a project that we're going to, but it's just one element of the project with other pieces of, of uh, other potential projects that are going to be built in the area. We want to be respectful to all those other facilities. So we want to do it right. Uh, so at this time, we're going to take, uh, to cancel the, the current. And, well, and it'll uh, be more attractive to contractors if you have one large facility to bid right. on as opposed to just so one at a time. Rebid later on? Yes, sir. Move to second on that. There's I'm going to be abstaining, Commissioner. There's a motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion, please. Since that was taken, then, authority to reject all the proposals received or ranked and cancel the project as it titled so as to modify and include as a component for constructing a multi-purpose concept facility for precinct four in the in the near future which would include all the elements that we discussed right. i need action on that so move second there's motion and second all those say aye aye, aye. both yeah you put on Yes. All right. Item E. E1 is under the Health and Human Services Department, recommend it, recommending bid award and approval of contract document to the responsible vendor submitting lowest and best bid, meeting all specifications. That's for turnkey uh, burial services, cemetery plots, and unidentified pauper remains. If you'll give me just a second, I'll tell you that that who that is. Is that your recommendation? It's the low bidder from the department. What's right. the name of the company? That's what I'm getting to. I'm sorry. Let me get it for you right now. I did not make a note to myself, but I have it right here. Valverde Memorial Gardens. All right. That is the vendor. What are they going to be? Uh, it's a turnkey solution for the burial. It's at sixteen hundred dollars a burial. How much? Sixteen hundred. Sixteen hundred. Yes. Well, One six, right? Those are for the burial services. It's a turnkey burial services solution. Yeah. All right. So you need action. Yes, sir. Yes. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And for further clarification, it includes the burial plot. Mm -hmm. That includes the burial plot. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. That's all I have. Item 21, or, uh, is under open forum, is Opal Billman. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Opal Billman. I was sued for divorce. The divorce didn't happen. Instead, there is 15 years of false imprisonment, which I have served a crime. And there is complete defamation, defamation 
of my character, my being, my existence as a person, and there is a beneficiary. Why? Because it was never about awarding Joe and me a fair division of our property and returning it with a final divorce. Actually, that would have been quite simple. It's debt-free land. Divide it into two parcels and give it back to the two people who own it. Elementary, one plus one is two. But no, the court made it about giving our property to someone who has never, ever done anything to earn any part of it. It's about the beneficiary. Where is the law that gives the court the authority to appoint a beneficiary for me, then give all of our community pro all of our community property to him in a divorce process. Show me that law. On the radio, Joan Rivers has a commercial in, sh in which she states quite loudly, no, I'm not dead. The beneficiary using a document titled Oality Deed of Trust made the rounds of several courts in the courthouse claiming to be my beneficiary and signed all of our community property over to himself. No one becomes anybody's beneficiary until that person dies. I have a bulletin for those with authority over this case who just can't wait. I'm not dead. During the trial of me for criminal trespass, which took place about six months ago, my defense was that I cannot trespass on land that I own. The verdict was not guilty. While I was on the witness stand, the state prosecutor yelled in my ear, do you know you didn't get anything? Do you know the house does not belong to you? and remarked to the jury, there's something wrong with her if she thinks that land still belongs to her. It was a divorce action. Show me the law I didn't get anything. Show me the law that the land does not belong to me. Texas community property law is that one half of the community property belongs to me. Our community property was not divided. It remains owned, undivided, equally by Joe and me. Texas law passes Joe's property, or in other words, Joe's estate, to his heirs. My father left an estate to his children. My father's estate belonged to him and was my father's estate for 50 years years after his death, all carried through by existing Texas law. Joe's undivided one half of the community property is his estate which has three owners. The remaining undivided one half is my community property. The undivided property has four owners. That's Texas law. The, co the Constitution of the United States of America Ms. specifically Ms. protects my ownership of the land. You have uh, 30 seconds. And prohibits the abridgment of my freedom in two of its amendments. I want the false imprisonment of me ended. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, no other presenters. Uh, let me, at this time, entertain a motion to proceed to executive session pursuant to 551-071 and 072 of the Texas Government Code. Trouble. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries.
Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Under open session, under real estate acquisition, uh, there's no action. Pending under potential litigation, there is no action. Claim of Jesus Perez. Is that the $95 claim? Yes, uh, Judge, uh, and I'll, I'll get back to it in a second. Yes, claim of Jesus Perez. Uh, I would like uh, for the court to give me settlement authority to make an offer in the amount of $95. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Aye, motion carries. Judge Commissioners, I'm sorry, I'm going to return back to uh, pending and or potential litigation. Uh, just as a disclosure, uh, under pending and or potential litigation, uh, there is a, uh, uh, a um, Acquisition of, uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, condemnation. There is a condemnation proceeding uh, that uh, has been brought to our attention. So uh, I will ask it just for the record that uh, in working with uh, Mr. Crane's office, we'll just uh, proceed as directed with respect to the condemnation proceeding. And we will have uh, the proper uh, disclosure uh, when appropriate to the court. All right, sir. Claim of Maria Losoya. We'll just proceed as directed. Claim of, or Norma Hernandez, DBA, CBS Services. Um, Judge Commissioners, for disclosure purposes, and we will bring out, uh, we will bring next week for uh, proper disclosure. Uh, we have a tentative settlement uh, agreement uh, with uh, Norma Hernandez, DBA, CBS Services. Uh, again, for disclosure purposes today, but we will bring the appropriate documentation uh, uh, next week. Item F, uh, Economic Development, Project Rainforest, uh, proceed as directed. There's no action at this point. And um, item, uh, the second Economic Development Project uh, Star, uh, Tax Abatement, again, proceed as directed. Okay. Is that it, brother? Yes, sir. I need a mo motion to adjourn. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Now, we need to decide what we're going to be doing with this workshop that's set for today on the uh, classification and comp compensation pay plan. We've been, it's now almost 1 o'clock, if not 1. We've been meeting since 9.15. Com Judge Commissioners, uh, Mr. Guajardo had to step away, so he does apologize for not uh, being here, but he had a prior commitment that he had to attend to, so he had to. We'll just leave it for another day. All right, we'll go ahead and. Uh, we are convening this workshop at another time. Okay, I'll get with the uh, appropriate staff from your office to All see right, what, thank you what very commissioners much for coordinate. Uh, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, gentlemen.